All right, wanted to do a quick update. The front carriage uh, was definitely not built correctly. So this is now, I don't know, like the third or fourth attempt to rebuild it. Essentially what was happening is the two sides, since they were, let's take you over here. Uh, since they were the single plates, they were bending. Um, even with the, the supports that I had on there, you can see there's the square and then I had the support down there. Um, but there was still from here to here, this is where the top of the rail was and the bottom was welded down there. Uh, but this basically that part in there bent and then it kind of bent while welding and it just wasn't very stable all around. So, um, since both of those would bend outwards, it would allow it to detract and do all kinds of bad stuff. So I decided I'm just going to make it as beefy as I possibly can. So I've got two, instead of one central connection here that then made it up to this pipe here, I now have the two um, uh, box tubes welded to this um, more of a oval tube uh, that's the same length as the rail down here. So if I want to add more um, bearings to it, I can, and then just add another support down here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go with just one cross support, just because I think that this is going to be very strong. And I don't, uh, I don't think that it'll be any twisting, but you know, who knows? Uh, I could be wrong. It's happened several times in the past. Uh, if that's the case, then I'm just going to get another pipe, weld it there, and then weld another cross member there to, and then that should definitely be good to go. Uh, but I wanted to show the alignment, how I align my uh, bearings on the rails. You can see there, pretty good. Is that a gap? Do I see a gap in there? Yeah, I see a little gap. Oh wait, is that a gap or no, is that a gap? That's just the front of the metal. Right? No gap. Um so anyway, um the way that I have rigged this up to make sure that the um everything's in line and they're at the correct angle. If I had the um the threaded rod, um if I had all the threaded rod I would need just like uh, Dr. ADHD, I, I would go that route because it's a much better route. But also his center beam is floating and so he can connect underneath it. And as you can see, my beam is not floating. It is squared or it is screwed onto the, uh, the base, the two by four of the base all around. So you cannot connect anything underneath. Um, so the only thing that'll hold it together is the top. So, um, but the threaded rod, even if you only do the top, is still a good idea to be able to not have to do all of this crap. Because basically, if I don't get this perfect, then I have to cut everything and redo it as I've done like two or three times. Um, I did that one. I think I did that one twice. I want to say maybe three times. And this one is probably on three or four times now that I've had to basically chop one side or every, in this case, I just redid the entire thing. So um, basically, I'll show you this setup. I've got a ratchet strap in the back. I did have a ratchet strap in the middle. Uh, let's get you out of the way. Yeah, get you out of the way so I can show stuff. Um, I did have a ratchet strap over the middle and that's all you would need. And you can set the angle you need. It will hold it tight. That was perfect. The only problem is this big bastard is in the way. And so I can't get this pipe as low down as I need it to. Cause as you can see, it's, it needs to connect to this pipe underneath this pipe and it's not very tall so this pipe has to get in there get in there this pipe has to sit in there ugh, about right about there so it's about halfway up and the rails on either side um <clears throat> So I've got the, the ratchet strap holding the back of the um, the rails back here instead of in, in between here. This is where I had it, but this thing's too tall. And so I can't get this in, in the position I need it to. 
and I was going to just weld this to one side and then like figure out the height it needs to be and then just weld it to one side and then uh, go pull it up and weld it to the other side but I've already done that twice and it has not worked at all so now I've got everything pinned in position uh, to exactly where it needs to be I've got that bar cut to eh, it's close enough the length it needs to be um, so now I'm just going to get this bar held in the place it needs to be of course as I uh, get that held in the place it needs to be and then tack weld it on and make sure everything's good make sure it rolls and then weld it up solid and tight and then uh, then I think we might be ready I do need to um, disassemble this motor when I was testing it I got everything wired up I'm not sure if I showed that last time but those are all eight of the IBT twos this this goes oh these cords up hold on, hold on. there we go those cords up that'll go in there like that um i need the uh, the top for it i've got all four of my power switches one two three four um all eight of my ibt2s down there two of uh both of the arduinos yeah that one's doing crazy things um, both the Arduino's in there, so that's all set up. Um, the all the wiring's done. The two motors and two potentiometers to the back, and then I've got the motors and potentiometers wired up here. Um, I need to still in the wiring. I need to buy a terminal and um, like a terminal output so I can um, I can have the motors to where I can disconnect them and connect them at will instead of basically having to keep every time I want to disconnect and reconnect, I just have to burn these um, shrink wraps on, uh, shrink wraps off of it, pull the wires apart. And then when I put it back together, I'd choose another shrink wrap. So don't want to do that. Want a more permanent solution. So uh, by the terminals for that, um, the motor, when i was doing testing this motor was um sticking it was very low it was basically there was a lot of friction in the motor essentially and it was very low on power it was uh it would lag tremendously behind this motor so um just before i started the testing though i tightened uh one of these bolts here because the case i can't really see it very well but the the case uh can you see that little gap down there anyway the case is um not on there all the way it's kind of floppy and i think the reason is because when i swapped these gearboxes i used the uh plastic um connecting piece that connects the metal shaft from this to the metal shaft to this it's like a it's like a uh, plastic urethane um circular bushing with slot, uh, slots cut in it for both those shafts um, and I reused the old uh, bushing whatever you want to call it connecting piece from the old um, gearboxes and I think it is like slightly like a millimeter maybe less slightly longer and so if I try to tighten this gearbox all the way down it uh, it pinches that and there and there's tremendous amount of friction you can hardly move the lever arm at all so I loosen that bolt back up, which is why you can, which is why there's a space in between the crank. And now that rotates a lot smoother. So that's good. Um, but I need, uh, I still am possibly going to take it apart or get the other two, um, the old gearboxes and get those operating smoothly. Um, either way, just because. I drilled holes in the back of these uh, when I wanted to have the potentiometer mounted on the back. Um, and that has allowed all of the, uh, not all, but basically all of the fluid that would have came up to here to leak out of the gearbox. So that's not good. And I don't really want to buy another set of these gearboxes. So I don't know. I'll, I'm going to figure that out. Uh, the biggest thing right now is getting this trolley uh, welded up and making sure that it is strong and it doesn't flex with the weight of everything. Oh, another thing that I discovered is um, I had to redo the the 
rear traction loss um, trolley wheels because I, I could have swore I measured them and everything, but after I let the simulator set with um, the, the top mounted on it and the seat and the, um, the steering wheel stand, with everything mounted on the sim rig, I let it set for, I don't know, a week or so, a couple days, and it would just sag more and more. This side would sag more and more to the point where it was, you couldn't even sit inside of it because it was tilted so much, and it was dropped backwards. So, I've got that um, remeasured. It's still a tiny bit off. Um, I might relocate this one. This side needs to go up the slightest little bit for it to be perfectly level. But um, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how it works when I get the the carriage on there. Um, also, the old carriage, this motor was slightly higher than this motor, and I mean it didn't seem like it was a lot um i think it was actually because this motor the the motor over here was bent outwards slightly because the mounting bracket had bent um either under force or through welding and which would you know instead of it the the motor focus camera on my hand instead of the motor being flat like so it was tilted like that which would drop the lever arm over here slightly below the other one um, so basically it was just tilted to a crazy degree. You could hardly sit in it. Um, and then along with the, the motor thing, I just, I didn't think it was going to work. So once I figured out all the issues, uh, and decided that I need to rebuild the trolley frame, I wanted to get a video to show how I am, hopefully if this works, how I got it to work this time. So this is my current method. I'll, uh, hopefully have another video up um with me testing it if everything goes according to plan on this so we'll talk to you guys later